Hi, a very good morning. I am Lakshmi Narayana Gunta, PGT in Zoology at AP Modern School and Junior College, Karvanja, Jalumuru Mandal, Sri Kakulam, District. And today we are going to discuss the different digestive glands and their secretions. The most important part the process of digestion. What are the digestive glands? What we have discussed earlier are they are salivary glands, they secrete saliva. The gastric glands, which are present in the walls of the stomach, they secrete gastric juice. And the liver, which secretes a juice called as bile juice. And the pancreas, it secretes pancreatic juice. And similarly, the intestinal glands, the glands present in the walls of these small intestine, they secrete another juice that is called as intestinal juice, which is also called as the sucus entericus. Sucus entericus. Okay, these are the different types of digestive glands and their secretions. Let us discuss all these digestive glands one by one. Okay, the first one is salivary glands. There are three pairs of salivary glands in our humans. Whereas in other mammals, they have four pairs of salivary glands. But we humans, we have only three pairs of salivary glands. They are the parotid glands, the submaxillary glands, sublingual glands. Here in this picture, you can clearly observe these are the parotid glands, parotid glands, which are present below the pinna. And submaxillary glands are submandibular glands. They are present at the angles of the jawbone. And these are sublingual glands sublingual glands lingua means tongue they are present below the tongue that's why they are called as sublingual glands the parotid glands present below the pinna the submaxillary or submandibular glands and the sublingual glands these are the three pairs of salivary glands present in humans and the secretions of these three pairs of glands is together called as saliva the ph of this saliva is 6.5 8 means it is slightly acidic. 7 is the neutral pH. Below 7 means 6, 5, 4, 3, they are acidic. And above 7, they are alkaline or basic. Okay. The pH of saliva is 6.8. And this saliva, it consists of an enzyme called as salivary amylase or tiling, which is responsible for the digestion of carbohydrates. Okay. And along with this Salivary amylase or tiling, it also consists of another enzyme called as lysozyme, which kills the microorganisms that tries to enter into our alimentary canal. Okay, and it also consists of mucus, mucin. Okay, this mucin it makes the food into a slurry mass, a slurry mass. The saliva, the major content of the saliva is water, which accounts for 99.5 percent is of food. Water. Okay, and this saliva it consists of an enzyme called as salivary amylase or tiling, which is responsible for the digestion of carbohydrates. These carbohydrates they are converted into simple sugars, those are called as maltoses. Okay, 30 percent of the carbohydrates are digested into maltoses in our mouth. Okay, and coming to the next gland, the gastric glands. These gastric glands. They are present in the walls of the stomach. They secrete a juice called as gastric juice. This one is the stomach. And the walls of the stomach, they contain glandular cells. These glandular cells, they together produce a juice called as gastric juice along with hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid. And this gastric juice, it consists of the enzymes that is the pepsin the proranin, the gastric lipase, okay, the pepsin, which is released as pepsinogen. Always remember that whenever there is a suffix gen or a prefix pro in the name of an engine, it indicates that those engines, they are inactive. Inactive means they, they, will, they won't function. If they are converted into active engines, then only they act on the substrate. Substrate means the food substance on which these engines they act means pepsinogen it is an inactive engine it is converted into pepsin an active engine by the pro, by the action of hcl okay this pepsin it acts on proteins and it converts into converts the proteins into peptones and this pepsin is an engine 
and these proteins they are substrates okay and similarly proreneum it is this enzyme this proreneum is converted into active renin and this proreneum it is seen only in infants it converts the milk protein into peptones okay and this renin is an enzyme and this protein is again a substrate and similarly the gastric juice also consists of small amounts of gastric lipase this gastric lipase it acts on fats and it converts the fats into fatty acids and also glycerol the food is there in the stomach for 2.5 to 4 hours and during this time the process of digestion is observed by these enzymes okay remember one thing in the gastric juice we don't have any enzymes which are responsible for the digestion of carbohydrates okay that's why carbohydrate digestion is not observed in the gastric juice okay and this semi digested food thoroughly mixed with the hydrochloric acid hcl is called as chyme most important thing what is chyme the partially digested or semi digested food thoroughly mixed with hydrochloric acid is called as chyme and the most important function of this hcl is it kills the microorganisms those escaped the mouth and it converts the inactive enzymes into active enzymes okay there will be a question what happens if hcl is not there in the gastric juice what happens the microorganisms will not be killed and the active inactive enzymes they are not converted into active enzymes they the, thereby the process of digestion is disturbed okay and the most important thing with this gastric juice is the ph of this gastric juice is 0.9 1.8 means it is very strong acid okay this acid it can damage the strong bones of our body also then what happens to the walls of this stomach the walls of this stomach they have a mucus lining and this mucus lining it protects the walls of the stomach from the action of this hydrochloric acid for this there is an activity in unit 7 we are going to perform that activity okay and coming to the next gland that is the liver liver is the largest gland of our body measuring about 1.2 to 1.5 kg in adults and it has two lobes here you can observe this one is the right lobe and this one is the left lobe okay and this liver it secretes a juice called as bile juice this bile juice it contains bile salts and bile pigments and this bile juice which is secreted by the liver is stored in a sac like structure called as the gall bladder this sac like structure which is present here is called as the gall bladder it stores the bile juice this bile juice it is released out by a duct called as common bile duct here you can observe this one is the common bile duct okay and similarly the pancreatic juice which is secreted by the pancreas is released by a duct called as pancreatic duct here you can observe this one is the common bile duct and this one is the pancreatic duct this common bile duct and pancreatic duct they together unite to form a single duct called as hepatopancreatic duct this hepatopancreatic duct it opens into the duodenum that is the first part of the small intestine what we have discussed in our earlier segments the common bile duct and pancreatic duct together they form hepatopancreatic duct okay this bile juice as we already have discussed it has no enzymes this bile juice is without any digestive enzymes then what is the use of this bile juice this bile juice even though it has it, it doesn't contain any digestive enzymes but it has a, a very crucial role very important role in the emulsification of fats what is emulsification here in this picture you can clearly observe this one is a large fat globule this large fat globule it is broken down into smaller fat globes and further smaller ones by the action of this bile juice bile juice it acts on the large fat globules and converts them into tiny fat droplets tiny fat droplets the process is called as emulsification for this emulsification the bile juice is essential 
if the bile juice is not there means the digestion of fats is disturbed okay what is emulsification emulsification is the process of breaking down of large fats into small globules okay na and coming to the next gland that is the pancreas pancreas is the second largest gland in our body and it is called as the mixed gland can you tell me why it is called as a mixed gland because it releases both enzymes and hormones as it is releasing both enzymes and hormones it is called as a mixed gland uh, what are the hormones released by this pancreas we are going to learn in the coordination chapter okay this pancreas it is situated in the limbs of this u shaped duodenum and the ph of this pancreatic juice is 8.4 8.4 means it is alkaline in nature okay and what are the enzymes present in this pancreatic juice let us discuss the pancreatic juice it consists of these enzymes they are pancreatic uh, amylase pancreatic lipase lipase so uh, trypsin and also sodium bicarbonate okay trypsin it acts on proteins and converts them into peptones and similarly the pancreatic amylase it amylase means it acts on carbohydrates pancreatic amylase means it is secreted by the pancreas that's why it is called as pancreatic amylase okay this pancreatic amylase it digests the carbohydrates and converts them into maltose or disaccharides okay and coming to the next enzyme that is lipase this pancreatic lipase it acts on fats and converts them into fatty acids and glycerol okay these are the enzymes present inside the pancreatic juice what are the enzymes trypsin amylase lipase coming to the next glands that is the intestinal glands which are present in the walls of the intestine the glandular cells present in the walls of the intestine they secrete a juice called as intestinal juice or sucus entericus intestinal juice is also called as sucus entericus we have already discussed in our earlier segment okay this sucus entericus it cons consists of a number of enzymes they are sucrase maltase lactase these are also called as disaccharides and peptidases and lipase and along with these it also consists of enterokinase okay the ph of this intestinal juice is 7.5 to 8 means it is alkaline and let me discuss what are the enzymes and what are their substrates okay the peptidases they act on peptides and they convert into they are converted into amino acids means the proteins finally they are converted into the simple absorbable forms amino acids and similarly lipase it converts the fats into fatty acids and glycerols and the sucrase it converts the sucrose into glucose plus fructose and maltase it converts the maltose into glucose i already told you the salivary amylase it converts the it digests the starch into maltose and these those maltose they are digested further by the action of maltase maltase it converts the maltose into glucose plus glucose means maltose is a simple sugar containing two glucoses and this maltose it is further broken down into two glucoses okay and similarly lactase it converts the lactose into glucose plus glucose and these are the different enzymes and they action in our next segment we are going to discuss the different events in the process of digestion thank you for watching and follow me on youtube simply by typing lakshminarayana punta thank you very much